So here we are one year later and back where it all started, in Hawaii. And I've been taking the Mini 3 Pro to places where no other Mini 3 Pro drone has ever been. Now the Mini 3 Pro is a year old now and has been a game changer for a lot of creators with its 4K videos, 48 megapixel photos and vertical shooting mode. And the option to shoot vertical videos and photos has made this the go-to drone for a lot of creators including myself. And this was also the first ever Mini drone to have tri-directional obstacle avoidance and the only Mini drone except for the Mini 3 standard that can be used with the amazing DJI RC controller. So because of that, this Mini 3 Pro quickly become one of the most popular consumer drones that DJI has ever made and there is a reason why but there's not only pros to the Mini 3 Pro. So in today's video I want to share my completely honest and unfiltered long-term review of this device and try to answer all your questions whether you just got one or are looking to get a new companion for your next trip. So, one year ago, I picked up the Mini 3 Pro, jumped on a plane, and flew to Hawaii. To be more exact, the island of Oahu, my happy place. And since the Mini 3 Pro was released the same day as our departure, I didn't have any of the accessories I needed. I was also told that Oahu was the last state in the US to receive new products. So, I was left with a drone with no accessories, only one battery, and 40 plus degrees Celsius. But even with a super bright lens of f 1.7, no ND filters, and a bright sunny day, the Mini 3 Pro pushed out amazing videos and photos. But one of the downsides with the smaller drone is of course the wind. And if you're familiar with the Hawaiian Islands, you might know that this could just as well be the place where the wind was born. And this time, there was no difference, probably worse than last year. And most of the times I just closed my eyes and went for it and surprisingly it held up pretty well. There was of course at times camera wobble due to the intense wind and gusts, but overall it performed good. Now, back in Hawaii one year later, I've been driving around the island of Oahu for a week now, flying both the Mini 3 Pro, the Mavic 3 Classic, even the Avara and the DJI FPV drone. Sadly, the DJI FPV drone was the offering this time, but I might make a separate video on that. Maybe. But one of the reasons I wanted to bring the Mavic 3 Classic was to put it up against the Mini 3 Pro as a travel drone to see if there's actually a huge difference in the performance and stability when it comes to flying these two. My best scenario would be to only bring one of the two and the Avara. So this was really an important test that I wanted to do just so I don't have to travel around with everything I have just to make sure I get the footage I need. The Mavic 3 Classic is of course the better drone here, but it also has a greater price than the Mini 3 Pro. So if the Mini 3 Pro can withstand or at least shoot the same stable videos in the same environment as the Mavic 3 Classic, it would be a no brainer if you ask me. Even if the quality is on a completely different level with the Mavic 3 Classic, I would prefer a smaller and more convenient drone to travel with. And if you ask me, the quality coming from the Mini 3 Pro is more than enough for making content here on YouTube or Instagram. But I'm lucky enough to have both, thanks to all the support from you guys. And a special thanks to all of you that picked up my signature LEDs. And for those that don't have them already, there's a link down with the discounted price along with the Mini 3 Pro down in the description. Now, the Mini 3 Pro can shoot 4K up to 60 FPS, take both vertical and horizontal videos and photos, and has all the features you need in a travel drone. And over the past few months, it has received numerous updates which added better stability to hyperlapse, better camera controls, tripod mode, sharpness and noise adjustments, and more. The only thing I would really like to see now is waypoints, but hopefully we might see this in the future. Now, before I dive into my long-term pros and cons about this drone after flying it for over a year now, I wanna show you a sequence I shot here in Hawaii. Everything is shot in 4K 30 FPS, just so I get that dual native ISO, as well as decent like for better dynamic range. All clips has been color graded with my signature LEDs and the settings I've used is the same settings you'll find in my free cheat sheets, which is down below. Now, let's take a look.
Now, if you ask me, the footage coming from this tiny drone still delivers. It's just amazing how good this drone is. But even when the video coming from the Mini 3 Pro is on the upper end, I always like to add some high-end music and sound effects to take the video or cinematic sequence to a higher level to make it more engaging to watch. Not only for me, but also for you. And thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Epidemic Sound, this is easier than ever. For this particular sequence, I wanted something which was cinematic, but also chill and modern, maybe with a build-up. And using these search terms on Epidemic Sound, I found exactly what I was looking for. And the same goes with sound effects. After putting together the sequence, I always play through the cinematic part of the video and basically look for sounds. So for this clip, I have the stream running below the drone. And on this one, I have a small waterfall. I also have a few shots where I'm flying close to the waves as well as inside the forest which makes for good bird sounds. And searching for these exact words, I always find the sound effects I need, which makes editing much easier when I'm putting together a sequence like this. But if you haven't tested Epidemic Sound yet, you should definitely give it a try. Test for yourself with my link in the description and get a 30 day free trial. Now, let's get back to Hawaii. Now, the Mini 3 Pro is a sub 250 gram drone, which means it has smaller propellers, a smaller camera, and is less likely to be detected, which makes it the perfect travel drone for most people. But this could also add to one problem. Let's talk about the pros and cons of the Mini 3 Pro after flying it for over a year. Even though I love how silent this drone is, at times, or it really depends on where you fly really. But for me, the low noise has caused some delays when I'm out shooting. It's not a problem, but because it's so awesomely silent, I've had a few times where I didn't know where the drone was, especially when flying in places, there's no chance of getting a GPS signal and everything has the same texture and color. Even if I can see everything on the screen, when I'm flying in the forest, which by the way, is the most epic kick I get when I'm flying these drones, it can be hard or it is hard to hear the drone when you have the stream running next to you as well as trees all over the place. And when I'm flying in places like these, I always change the safety settings of the signal loss to hover just to have some sort of control. But like I said, I love the stealthy vibe of this drone, but because it's so silent, it could cause you to gasp when you can't hear it nor see it because it is small and it can easily blend in with nature. So just keep that in mind if you're ever gonna fly in the forest. Now bringing the Mini 3 Pro around the island, it is extremely portable and it barely has any weight to it when traveling around. So this makes traveling with this drone more comfortable because you don't really need to bring a full backpack just to get some aerial shots. A small shoulder bag is enough to carry the drone, the controller, and a few accessories. And recently I swapped out the Mini 3 Pro Flymore bag with the PGY Tech 6 liter shoulder bag. And I think this looks much better than the original DJI bag and it can also fit more and has a better system for organizing different accessories even two outside pockets for a smaller tripod other accessories or some snacks and something to drink I'll leave a link down below in the description if you want to take a deeper look at this shoulder bag but in general for transporting the mini 3 pro it's actually small enough to fit in your pocket but the DJI RC is not so the setup is not really pocket sized and I think most people put this in a camera bag or a shoulder bag anyway. Walking around with this in your pocket would just feel clunky, look bad, and you're more likely to damage your drone, especially if you're up for a hike. But the smaller setup you get with the Mini 3 Pro and the DJI RC really makes it easier to get around. And not to mention the weight. I've said it many times, but it still blows my mind to this day. 249 grams and packed with features like 4K60, vertical mode, active track tripod and HDR which by the way is something you need to convert to in post the HDR video is only HDR ready so you're not really getting that HDR without a little bit of work in post but you do get more dynamic range with the dual native ISO and the Cinelike but because of the low weight and small size of the Mini 3 Pro, the wind will have a huge say in when and where you can fly this drone. And if you fly this in very high winds, you will get a lot of warnings. But 
personally, I've yet to experience issues with this drone in high winds. What you probably didn't know is that the gimbal will suffer before the actual drone. So when you see issues with the gimbal, it's time to turn around. Take a look at this shot for example, this was the most windy day we experienced in Hawaii last year. And pushing the Mini 3 Pro over the ridge line, the gimbal got gusted. The drone was a bit all over the place, but nothing indicated that the drone would either crash, flip, or have any issues returning to home. But since the gimbal and camera is so small, it can easily twist in extreme gusts. And when I fly in conditions like this, I usually don't fly far, but it's totally doable and I don't see the issues people are reporting. It will wobble from side to side and up and down if you fly in extreme winds, but nothing a stabilization in post can and fix. Now let's talk about the overall flight experience which I've had with the Mini 3 Pro after flying it for 13 months. The Mini 3 Pro is by far the most satisfying drone I've ever flown. It barely makes a sound and the highest pitch level you get when you fly this is when you hover a few meters above your head. Going up or down and from side to side, it's barely hearable, which makes it more relaxing to fly when you're capturing videos from the beach, when you watch the sunset or hiking towards the unknown. And I think this is the main reason along with its features that people love this drone so much. Because as a beginner, you can easily get uncomfortable when you're out flying, especially if the drone is loud, like the DJI FPV or the Avada. Even the Mavic 3 Classic has an angry wasp takeoff and hovering. But with the Mini 3 Pro, you don't get that. You get the perfect little drone which seems like it's more shy than angry. This makes it the perfect travel drone for beginners or for those just wanting to add a smaller drone to their setup. Now, what I like the most about this drone is how it shoots videos and photos. I've never actually been disappointed when looking back at the videos or photos captured with the Mini 3 Pro and the 4K 30 FPS is what I use the most. And now that I'm able to control the sharpness and noise levels, I think the footage looks even better. Now, tripod mode is also an amazing new feature to the Mini 3 Pro. Though I saw myself using the normal speed most of the time, it's become more of a habit, I guess, to use the sports mode out to the area I want to shoot and then switch over to normal mode. And I think it's mainly because of the way that I set my gain and expo settings. I fly really slow when I push the sticks almost halfway to either direction and then it goes faster when I push the sticks further to the edge. But when I was flying in the forest, I always used tripod mode and the result was mind blowing. But for any pilot, new or experienced, I think tripod mode is the perfect addition to this travel drone. And it really helps you get a much more stable shot, especially when you fly in tight places. And another feature which is unique to the Mini 3 Pro, which you can't find in any of the other Mini drones, is the d like color profile and active track, which is the features I use almost every single time I'm out flying with this drone. And I think d like is one of the things that makes this so popular. It allows you for better dynamic range in the highlights and shadows, which makes it easier to color correct and grade your footage. But for those wanting to shoot straight from the hip, the normal color profile is just just as amazing if you ask me. At the end, it's how you want to shoot your videos and what type of profile that you prefer. But this in the like is by far the easiest profile to practice on if you're all new to color grading. And personally, this is my favorite color profile of them all. Now, active track. This is to me a hit or miss feature, but despite the overall madness going on when I'm using this, I still love it. Most of the time it's doing an amazing job, especially if the movement goes one direction. And because of the lack of side sensors, you could potentially push it into an obstacle, which could damage your drone. I was quite lucky and didn't have any damage to mine. The only thing I wanted to do was to change the propellers just to be on the safe side before heading to Hawaii. Now, let's talk about battery life. Has it changed over the last year? Am I still getting the same juice after charging each of the batteries over 200 times? 
Well, battery life is the most crucial part of any drone. You want as much battery as possible so you can fly longer. And to be honest, you can't get enough batteries. With the Mini 3 Pro, you have a stated 34 minutes of battery life in optimal conditions with the standard batteries. But let's face it, none of us is ever going to fly a drone in optimal conditions or get close to 34 minutes with the standard battery. You have to consider the environment you're flying in, the wind, also the temperature, altitude, distance, and not to mention the speed you have when you fly. So the average flight time of the Mini 3 Pro is about 24 to 26 minutes. It also depends on how you fly and your flying style. And this is different from person to person. But 25-ish minutes in such a small and compact drone is actually quite impressive. You can also get the plus batteries, but unfortunately they are not sold here in Europe or in Norway. And to be honest, I didn't feel like picking them up from the States either. The three batteries I have now is more than enough, especially if I put the empty battery to charge right after I'm done flying. And then when I'm halfway through the third battery, the first one is already fully juiced and the second one is about 50 or 60%. And this actually keeps me going throughout the entire day. But if you only have one battery and looking to get a few extra, which I highly recommend, you also have the plus option, which will give you a stated 47 minutes but in reality 43 minutes or so but this also brings the drone above that 250 gram mark so something to consider before you decide but getting at least two extra batteries is a must if you ask me and the best option is to get the fly more kit which comes with a charging hub two extra batteries some spare propellers and a dji shoulder bag which i personally would change up with the pgy tech 6 or 10 liter shoulder bag and with the small size and the batteries being extremely lightweight it's easy to grab a few of these and just throw them in your pocket or anywhere in your bag now, flying with the standard batteries here in Hawaii, one year later, I was actually peaking at 28 minutes at tops when I was getting as close to optimal conditions as I could when I was flying in the forest. Last year, I got 29 minutes as my best, and this could be due to many different factors. But overall, I haven't noticed any loss of capacity with the three batteries that I have. Even though I charged them so many times, it seems to be exactly the same as when I first picked them up. Now, one of my favorite things to do with the Mini 3 Pro is to fly in the forest because it's so small and people barely hear it. Or if they do, it's because they see the controller first and then starts looking up. But I wouldn't be so comfortable flying in the forest if it wasn't for the obstacle avoidance sensors. And luckily, we have forward, backwards, and downwards facing sensors to keep us safe when we're out flying in tight places. So flying through the stream here and dodging branch after branch has never been easier when I'm flying around in the forest. All I do is push forward and the Mini 3 Pro does everything for me. So the avoidance sensors basically calculates a safe route for you and then uses the advanced algorithm to avoid avoid the obstacles in front of the drone. You also have two settings to choose from when you want to use the obstacle avoidance sensors. You can choose brake, which is basically stop and hover, or you can choose bypass, which will allow the Mini 3 Pro to pass by the subject or object, either to the left, right, above or below. Though it's important to know that the obstacle avoidance system is only available in Cine and normal mode. When you change to sport mode, the avoidance system will automatically be turned off. And if you're a brand new drone pilot or just don't want to risk losing your drone when you're trying to get some amazing shots in fairly tight places, the obstacle avoidance sensors on the Mini 3 Pro is a huge advantage which none of the other Mini drones have. But there's also a when and when not to when it comes to using obstacle avoidance sensors. So let's say when I'm flying around deep inside the forest here, which by the way was one epic hike, in scenarios like these, I would keep the sensors on just in case I get close to a small branch, which is hard to detect on the screen. This will also help me maneuver the drone more dynamically around the obstacles. And in some situations, it might also create a pretty awesome sequence without doing much effort because the avoidance system is doing the dodging and calculations for you. And everything you do is to push forward. 
But like I said, there is situations where you don't want to use the avoidance system. And that's when you fly at a lower altitude and have movement beneath the drone. An example here would be water. Because the waves coming in is pretty huge, if the drone is flown too low to the waves, the avoidance sensors will actually bring the drone up for each wave that comes. I'm not saying it will jump and gain a meter in altitude, but when you play back the footage later, you will most likely see that your footage is sort of pulsing up and down. So I strongly recommend that you disable the avoidance sensors whenever you fly above water. Just make sure to enable them once you're done with the water shots so nothing happens next time you're out cruising. Now, one of the biggest questions when you're getting the Mini 3 Pro or the Mini 3 Standard is, should I add the DJI RC controller? I got so many questions about this controller that I made a dedicated video just to talk about it. So I'll leave that video down in the description if you wanna check it out. But now I've been using the Mini 3 Pro and the DJI RC for over a year. It's actually been 13 months. So has anything changed over the past 13 months of using the DJI RC controller with the Mini 3 Pro? Well, to start with, we have seen more compatibility with this controller. You can now use this with the Mini 3, Mini 3 Pro, the Mavic 3 series, the Air 2S, and the upcoming Air 3. Now, the DJI RC controller was first introduced with the Mini 3 Pro as an option next to the DJI RC N1 controller, and has been the go-to for a lot of people, including myself. It has a built-in screen with 700 nits, which takes away all the hassle with using cables to connect your phone. This also means your phone stays a phone and you can still fly without being interrupted by messages or calls. And depending on where you fly, you don't have to think about draining your phone's battery just to fly. For me, this is huge since I'm mostly spending my time hiking ridges or traveling deep inside the forest when I'm in Hawaii. And this is one place you don't want your phone to have a flat battery. And the 700 nits after 13 months now, it's still more than enough for me and I haven't had much problems in bright daylight. Yes, it is harder to see, but I can still see when, where and what I'm shooting and that's the whole point, right? And the cons when using a phone, especially an iPhone, is the screen dimming down to prevent overheating. I mean, I can't even edit a photo in Lightroom without the phone dimming. Even with everything turned off, it still dims. And let's say if you're traveling to a country and you're out flying in warm places, this will give you zero visibility and could potentially be dangerous. And with the DJI RC controller, you don't get that. So yeah, it will be a bit harder to see the screen in direct sunlight, but still manageable. Plus, you will have the same consistent 700 nits, regardless of the controller putting on some heat. And it's also lighter than the RCN1 controller, despite having a built-in screen. The cons of this controller, though, it is laggy. Going through the menu is nothing like using a phone, so that would be the drawback when using the DJI RC controller. But to be honest, when you're up, you're up, and the general flying experience is no difference to the RC N1 controller with a smartphone. It's only that mini navigation which at times could be a pain. But all in all, I still prefer this over the RC N1 controller, and I still recommend it as the number one controller to get with the Mini 3 Pro. Now, last time we were in Hawaii, I didn't have any ND filters like I mentioned earlier. This time, I had more than ever. Normal ND, ND polarizer, long exposure NDs, even anamorphic, which sadly I didn't get the time to use. So traveling to a destination where you and your drone will spend most of your time together in the sun, ND filters is a must. It's basically sunglasses for your drone and the way it works is simple. If it's bright and sunny, you put on sunglasses because it will make it easier and more comfortable for your eyes. The same goes for the Mini 3 Pro. When this gets some ND filters, it will be super happy and give you a much better and more natural image in return. But the Mini 3 Pro also has an aperture of f1.7, so it takes in a lot of light. That means ND filters is essential, and you might find yourself using a higher ND than what you're normally used to with different drones, because the aperture is f1.7. But I also have my free cheat sheets, which you can download down below. This is a quick and simple guide to help you use the correct ND filter and other settings in any scenario. And like I said, these are completely free. 
So make sure to grab them down below. And also the ND filters that I use for my drones uh, are the ND filters from Freewell. I will leave a link down to them down in the description below. I've been using Freewell ND filters for five, six, seven years now, and uh, I couldn't think of any better ND filters to recommend. So links down in the description. So after 13 months, should you go out and buy this drone or should you wait for the next mini drone? As I can see, the Mini 3 Pro will be the top mini drone for at least another two years. There's nothing that indicates that DJI will be releasing a Mini 4 in the near future, now that we have the Mini 3 Pro. And why would they? The Mini 3 Pro has everything we need, except for the side sensors and some features we only see in the bigger models. And after all, this is an entry-level beginner drone, which happens to have amazing specs and features. And if anything, I would think DJI would rather add new features to the Mini 3 Pro than release a brand new drone, especially when the Mini 3 Pro is so popular. So yeah, I can highly recommend this drone after using it for over a year now. Like I said, I also took the Mavic 3 Classic to Hawaii and to me, these are both equal. Uh, one is dead silent and gets no attention whatsoever and the one shoots videos at the best quality I've ever seen in a drone, especially one that I own myself. So it's more of that what do you need a drone for type of question. I would say if you're making money or planning on making money with your drone outside of YouTube, get the Mavic 3 Classic, but everything else, Mini 3 Pro will be the best choice. If you wanna check out the Mini 3 Pro yourself, there is a link down in the description along with my signature LUTs and the ND filters I use for all my drones. And also don't forget to pick up the free cheat sheets. Now, I think that wraps it up. It feels like I've repeated myself multiple times here. So if I did, I'm sorry about that. But again, the Mini 3 Pro has truly been a joy to use in the past year. It's definitely worth getting. Now, I hope I could help you in your decision of whether or not you should pick up the Mini 3 Pro or not. And if you found any value in today's video, let me know by dropping a like. And if you're brand new to this channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next videos with the Mini 3 Pro, Mavic 3 Classic, and the DJI Avada. So that wraps it up. Links to everything will be down in the description. And I will see you in the next video.